County. This is Councilman Brett Sanders recapping May the 2nd, 2023's council meeting. Uh, short meeting tonight. Uh, we had third reading on a right-of-way easement or grant to the city on some sewer that they're doing on Mildred Road, and it's approximately 18-foot uh, permanent easement and 15-foot temporary easement, so it is to uh, uh, straighten out some lines that's already there and possibly run new lines. Also tonight, we had uh, second reading on Major Road up in the Piedmont Powdersville area to reduce uh, truck traffic on it. And basically uh, it is between Wren School Road and 88. I mean there are some things coming through. There's a lot of schools there. Number one, there's a lot of uh, school traffic on it and our Roads and Bridges Department went out and it was mainly closed uh, for safety reasons and for close to through truck traffic and I think uh, a lot of the uh, trucks and things the uh, internet or your GPS shows you the shortest way and it's kind of a cut through to get across so hopefully that will uh, improve the safety up there in that area. Uh, tonight we also had a second reading on the clear bag policy again that was a, a safety concern like in county uh, facilities you know, county buildings. It was more, uh, I think the Sheriff's Department had requested that. It makes things a little simpler and easier on them. And I'm glad to uh, assist the Sheriff's Department and I'm glad to do anything that uh, promotes uh, increased safety for not, count, not only county employees but for the citizens as well. Uh, first reading tonight uh, was a eyes eyed change. I think it was 19. 19.1 acres up off of uh, Highway 76 right there at Arthrex and it had come before council before and was approved. I think they're doing some uh, apartments up there and now they have access to sewer and they increased the number of apartments. I think they increased the uh, green space as well so they're allowed to uh, utilize uh, the sewer access now and can increase the number of units. I did follow up with the uh, Planning Commission and they said that uh, no one had showed up in opposition or uh, for the project. So on first reading, so that'll move forward on to uh, second and third reading. Also to uh, night, we had uh, an ordinance to pass the budget in title only. And basically, as you know, I'm the chairman of the Finance Committee and I made a list of uh, bullet points. Uh, to share with council and I'll be happy to share them with you guys. Um, the total budget proposed for all funds was $277 million uh, and some change, almost $278 million. The general fund was $114.6 million. Um, we have $15 million in uses of balance or general fund balance. What that is is the reserve that we have in our ordinance. Normally we like to have between uh, three to six months reserve. So basically that was the uh, $15 million there. Uh, $37 million of the total budget was increased due to uh, funds coming from federal grants and state grants. So that was a large increase. We had 31 positions uh, requested. I think three were recommended by our administrator and that was uh, one in the Parks Department and two in Roads and Bridges. Also our EMS Department, our first responders or paramedics actually are under the county now so basically we just switched them under the general fund so to speak like normal county employees. I don't think it had gotten changed over the past budget so this is the first year of that. That got moved over. Uh, we also provided funding for the Sheriff's Department for their uh, pay plan that they have in place so that will allow them uh, to continue to uh, cover cost of living and also allow them to uh, remain competitive with other counties and helps uh, the retention rate and also helps in recruitment of officers. And finally, I think the, the, the biggest part right now in first reading, there was no tax increase. And again, we'll have uh, uh, probably a lot more uh, budget finance meetings uh, coming up. There are some areas that uh, we saw or I have seen that uh, there are room for uh, some changes that will actually just, uh, I think it's more of uh, a structural deal 
in some of the departments or one of the departments that I saw that would uh, create a savings that would offset the things that they had requested for in the budget. So basically, hey, we can do this, save this money, and that will allow you, I think it was uh, body cameras, allowed them to have uh, body cameras, plus it would allow for that stair step program or pay scale, so to speak. With Plus on other departments, I did meet with every department head or sent out the invitation to anyone that wanted to come in and sit down with me one-on-one -on -one and just talk in general. I find that um, very interesting. Not only it's a learning experience for me, it also allows uh, the department head to uh, sell you on their budget. You know, a lot of times, you know, you, you're looking at a, a bunch of numbers and you look at last year and this year's and you go, oh, there's a, a huge increase here. Well, a lot of times that huge increase, if you don't get into the details, you don't realize that, oh, we can cut some money here. Well, basically that huge increase was, you know, a, a new position that we had to have. It could be um, insurance, benefits. There's, there's a whole lot of things when you're looking at an overall total figure. I like to uh, sit down with department heads and, and break it down, to go through some of the day-to-day, -day, uh, the expenses and, and operation costs. And by doing that, uh, you can find uh, ways to uh, tweak things or see ways to uh, combine things to save money. And, you know, everyone complains about uh, budget season, but uh, that, those kind of things get me excited. I like being behind the scenes, sitting down, looking at the numbers, and, and, and finding a way to uh, make something possible with what you have. So making the best of what you have. At one of our, our last finance committee meeting, we have over $7.1 million of capital projects. And one, what a capital project is, is uh, the roof on this courthouse. It's leaking, uh, some wood rotting underneath it. I think that was over a million dollars. We have some state buildings or buildings that the state occupies, DHEC, social services, uh, those buildings need repairs. And uh, basically there's $7.1 million worth of repairs and the money's not there to do that and run the county. So it's sad to say that, you know, you look at those and I'm like, hey, Mr. Richardson, you know, this is the same thing we were looking at last year, the year before that, the year before that, the only difference is uh, with inflation and, and the cost of things now, it, it just continues to rise. So I have made uh, uh, the suggestion and we're looking into uh, some things as we requested a list list of all properties owned by the county. Uh, I think I've said it before, Mr. Dunn uh, said it again tonight, uh, you know, the county shouldn't be in the real estate business. I think um, we get a list of those buildings, uh, we determine what we actually need or are going to need in the future and the others I think we need to get rid of and start a, uh, a capital project fund. There needs to be money put aside, I think, annually, just like a savings account at your house. Uh, set some money aside for that rainy day or that unforeseen problem that arises and while that it can draw interest in an interest-bearing account and that money can be and should be just, uh, specifically for capital projects, roofs, a leak, paint, carpet, it amazes me at, you know, the cost of some of this stuff. And and you look around and, and you know, you're thinking a million dollars for a roof, but then when you look at the uh, intricacies and the rot and the things behind it, you know, it, it's a lot different, uh, especially on a historic building. It's, it's not like you can run down to Lowe's and, and, and buy some shingles and call your buddy or your neighbor down the street that does it on the side and come up and do it. I mean, it is a, a massive, major undertaking, and we're seeing it and we're feeling it. So I would like to push for and see us ha have a plan, a long-term plan. You know, I, we put Band-Aids on things, and... Uh, Basically, and and I'm guilty of trying to you know to save money. I, I don't want to raise taxes, and no one wants their taxes raised. So, uh, in order to uh, keep from raising your taxes, something gets a band-aid stuck on it, and the band-aid situation uh, works in in certain certain areas, but also that band-aid is a temporary fix. You can't just uh, keep doing the same thing over and over. I come up with a plan, a plan of action to uh, make something happen and, and get a project completed and wait, uh, find a way to fund it. My main focus right now, once we get through this budget, is to uh, 
set up in place a plan, a long-term plan that when I'm out of here and gone, that there's still money there so that, you know, that Band-Aid we keep putting on something, when, when there's no more Band-Aids left, there is a, a fund and money set aside to complete or finish a project. And, you know, that's, that's uh, I think, my goal so far on this budget. And to see it a, a long-term plan in place. Well, we had some state funding that came through uh, uh, for Dolly Cooper Park, which as you know, I'm, I'm sure you've been out there, and those of you that haven't been out there, you need to ride up and see. Uh, it's an amazing uh, facility here in Anderson County, right on the uh, Saluda River at the Greenville-Anderson line. I think um, there was a $342,000 grant for a playground that uh, we received, so we did the change order to actually accept that grant and use it to do the playground up at Dolly Cooper. But I think a lot of people don't realize what is actually here in Anderson County. The things that uh, uh, you can see and do, and, and you ride, you need to ride out, and take a look, and uh, take the family and enjoy yourself. That pretty much uh, sums up our council meeting uh, tonight. But I would like to uh, recognize a Lowell Brandon, and he was the Yamaha. Bright Waters Bass Master Kayak Champion, or uh, won the fishing tournament out there, and he is a local guy. That, and it, that was on Lake Hartwell, uh, the 15th through the 16th of April. Awesome. I do also know that uh, I was uh, at the QT getting gas and talked to uh, a couple guys there with their kayaks and family that came down from uh, North Carolina, up on the coast of North Carolina, came down to Anderson uh, to fish that tournament and they were uh, talking about how beautiful Anderson was and how much they appreciated the hospitality here and talked about Green Pond and some other things. So uh, it's great to see someone from the Outer Banks talk about the, the beauty and the things to do here in Anderson County. So that was good. So.